In this video, we're going to look at the common emitter amplifier and identify the range of input voltages that the common emitter will give provide linear amplification or linear voltage amplification. We now understand that the base to emitter voltage, the base to emitter voltage, is the controlling quantity in BJTs, and that there's an exponential dependence on um, on VBE, or we've seen then that I sub C, the current through the transistor, effectively through the transistor, is equal to I sub S E to the VBE divided by V sub T. In the common emitter amplifier, we have then VBE as the input voltage, and VCE, the voltage from the collector to the emitter, is our output voltage. And when ta taking those two and, and uh, calculating the relationship between them, we then have this voltage transfer curve, or the VTC, that we saw in the previous video. Once again, the, this transfer curve has the transistor shut off up until VBE is nominally equal to about 0.5 volts, 0.4.5, somewhere in there. So prior to, for, or for VBE less than about 0.5 volts, the transistor is not conducting, and the voltage at the, at the collector, VCE then, is pulled up to VCC, and we see that here. Then as the transistor begins to turn on, there is an exponential relationship between VBE and VCE, corresponding to, and we can talk about this VCE value, VCE plotted along this axis as a function of VBE, VCE then is equal to the uh, power supply voltage, VCC, minus the voltage drop across the resistor. Or it's equal to VCC minus the resistance times the current flowing through the resistor. And the task for the engineer designing the amplifier then is to identify some mid-range point, some point mid-range along this relatively linear part of the voltage transfer curve. We nominally think about it as being between the active mode, where it goes from cutoff and into the active mode, to where it then leaves the active mode and goes into the uh, saturation mode. And as you can see, there is some nonlinearity here, that a straight line approximation may not be as good in this part of the curve as it is down here. But the gain as we saw, the gain is defined as the slope of the line tangent to the voltage transfer curve at the bias point. And our task then becomes to identify a bias point that allows for swings around the bias um, collector to emitter voltage without bumping our heads or uh, getting into the cutoff area or without getting into the uh, into the saturation region. So we need to provide enough headroom for linear amplification without the transistor going into cutoff and enough foot room to provide for linear amplification before it gets into the saturation region. And in that point, or that the slope of that then, is the gain of the amplifier. And as we can see, or as we saw in the previous video, just the derivative of this with respect to VBE gives us then that the gain is equal to negative R sub C, the collector resistance value, times I sub C, the bias current, the bias collector current, divided by the thermal voltage. And we can write it in a number of different forms that are useful depending upon what we know. So now let's take a look at this and calculate the gain at some point that's given to us to be that the transistor is biased at VCE equals 3.2 volts. So this value right here is 3.2 volts. And we're told that the resistor is a 6.8 kiloohm resistor. So first of all, let's find then what I sub C is and what the corresponding VBE, VB is, the, the bias VBE value. So for this bias point, then, we can calculate I sub C. I sub C is just the voltage drop across the resistor, which is VCC minus the bias VCE, which is 3.2, divided by the resistance, or 6.8K. And we get, then, that this 
transistor is biased with an I sub C equal to 1 milliamp. We can de de determine the corresponding VBE bias by plugging in 1 milliamp here. We're told that I sub S is 10 to the minus 15th, and we can then calculate um, VBE at the bias is equal to then the thermal voltage V sub T times the natural log of 10 to the minus third divided by 10 to the minus 15th. And when we do that, we find that this transistor is biased at a voltage of 0.6908 volts. Not exactly 7 tenths of a volt, but within 1 one hundredth of a volt. And we'll see as we go along here that as we go from cutoff to saturation, VBE really isn't going to change all that much, such that that approximation of saying let's let VBE equal 0.7 across the, the range is um, you know, a pretty realistic value to be using. Now we can calculate the gain, A sub V, using any one of these, but we've got VCC, that's, uh, let's see, we were told VCC was 10 volts, because I'll put that on here, VCC equals 10 volts. So we can calculate A sub V by going 10 volts, A sub V then is equal to 10 minus VCE at the bias, which was 3.2 volts, divided by the threshold voltage, or the thermal voltage of 0 0.025, and that gives us a VBE of 272, and then of course there is an inversion in there. There's a minus sign on each of these. Our next point is how big can this VBE signal get? How big can VBE get before we run into the saturation region? Well, again, we have this model here, or this equation, that defines the current voltage relationship along that curve. And we go into saturation when the voltage across the across the transistor, the VCE sat, is on the order of 0.3 volts at the edge, at the border, and this, the, this book is using 0.3 volts as the edge of saturation, and when VCE sat is 0.2 volts, you're well into the, uh, just to do it here, VCE sat is here at 0.3 volts, and 0.2 volts would then push us well into the saturation region. So we can calculate the current flowing through here when VCE is equal to 0.3 volts. Once again, just like we did up here, I sub C then would be equal to VCC, which is 10 volts, minus now the volts across the or at the collector would be 0.3 volts divided by the 6.8 kilo ohms, and that gives us then 1.617 milliamps. So our bias current was 1 milliamp. At the saturation, at the border going into the saturation region, I sub C is equal to 1.617 milliamps. And we can calculate the corresponding VBE using um, the relationship that uh, VBE2, the new VBE, is equal to the old VBE um, plus V sub T times the natural log of I2 over I1. So that then gives us the old VBE was uh, 0.698 volts, so that would be equal to 0.6908 plus 0 0.025 times the natural log. I'm running out of room here. The natural log of the new current, 1.617 milliamps, 1.617 milliamps divided by 1 milliamp. And when we do that calculation, we get that VBE2, the voltage drive at the point where this transistor would go into saturation, would equal 0 0.7028 volts. So the maximum value on this, the point that would drive this at the point 3 volts, it correspond to a VBE of 0 0.7028 volts. Again, not far from the 0.7 volts that we are, again, going to be using, or typically use when we're doing our calculations.
finally we can ask ourselves, how small can V B E B? What is the limit, the lower limit on this, before the transistor goes into cutoff? Or we can say before we get to within um, one percent of the cutoff voltage. So at cutoff, V C C then would equal, or I'm sorry, V C E. The voltage here would equal at within one percent of 10 volts would be ni within one percent of that would be 9.9 .9 volts. So we're talking about now V C E being 9.9 9 volts, we now go through a similar kind of calculation that we did before. I sub C now is going to equal um, 10 minus 9.9 .9 volts divided by the 6.8 kilo ohms, and that gives us a current of 0 0.0147 um, milliamps. And the VBE2, the new VBE associated with that, we'll call that then VBE2, will equal the VBE1, which was the 0 0.6908, plus VTE.05 times the natural log of the new current, which we just calculated to be 0 0.0147 milliamps divided by the 1 milliamp. And when we do that, and go through and calculate it, we get then that VBE2 is equal to 0.5858 volts. So VBE2 coming into within 1% of the cutoff region would be at 0.5858 volts. So to remain within the strict uh, definition between the active mode or the, the uh, remaining in the active mode, not going to cut off and not going into saturation, the voltage VBE can swing, swing between 0.5858 volts and 0.7028 volts.